Marvel Spider-Man on PS4 was way too easy. Spider-Man 2 is much harder, but still not enough of a challenge to uninstall the game and review bomb it on IMDb. So I attempted to turn this into Dark Souls by setting the game to the maximum difficulty of Ultimate and forcing myself to complete the main story without unlocking anything. No suit tech, no gadgets, no skills, and no abilities. Just myself and 19 inches of Venom. This also means I'll only have a single focus bar to heal and perform finishers, and unlike the first game, I have to fill this bar entirely to heal, which makes this challenge even harder. There are a few things I'm forced to unlock, but I'll address those as we get to them. On top of that, I also banned Symbiote Surge and Mega Venom Blast. And to pay homage to Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark, I also enabled fall damage. This is going to be brutal, let's go. The story began as Peter gave the worst possible first day teaching performance and decided to skip school with Miles to head to the beach. The first section wasn't too bad since there's not much you can unlock at the start of the game anyway. I fought Sandman, threw this guy out of the window for some reason, and played Marco Polo. Marco. Okay, I don't know how this game works. Peter and Miles took down Sandman and unfortunately I was forced to buy Spider Whiplash for the skills and to craft the upshot gadget. Luckily, this is the only skill and the only gadget I need to craft until I earn one more story-related gadget in the endgame. I discovered these weird sand crystals from Marco where I had to take out a bunch of his sand minions, and I took one lucky fan on a web ride around the city. Someone get a photo with us! Mass criminals kidnap beloved newsman! Peter got fired from You're his job, fired. but oh well, at least exploring in the game is fun. I went to May's house and had a flashback, then I got to meet Harry. We rode on bikes to our old high school to prove we're not washed up, and for some reason didn't lock the bikes. Oh, it's fine. This New York is known for low crime. I had a war flashback to high school, Big and I talker. absolutely dunked on Harry in basketball. I don't know. Good one. What's the score? I have no idea. I stopped by the raft and had to accompany my favorite criminals, Scorpion and Martin Lee. I am very sorry, and I apologize for the inconvenience of me not keeping up. Of course, this was the intro to Craven's gang, and I had to fight these hunters off an escort boat and the stock. Inside the boat, Miles got tricked, and unfortunately, Craven got Scorpion and Lee got away. As Miles, I got introduced to one of Uncle Aaron's prowler stashes. They're all over the city? That's so cool, I'm gonna simply never open another one of these for the rest of the game. After this, my hand was forced, and I did have to upgrade my health to continue, but for the most part, that extra 10 HP was extremely useless, since I still only had one focus bar, and boss hits later in the game did a lot more damage than 10 HP. Change? Yeah. Big change. I did one side mission and had to punish this guy setting off illegal fireworks by burdening him with medical debt for the rest of his life. I took out some clowns, then set off fireworks on my own and headed to Brooklyn Visions Academy. At the school fair, Miles quickly got sidetracked and had to search for a missing teacher. After finding her, I took out the guys that kidnapped her, absolutely bombed his phone interview, and returned to the school where they celebrated me before I switched back to Peter to visit the Emily May Foundation. I was tasked with the very important job of shooting some holograms, and I made sure to check the crowd as well. Very productive session. I said hi to Dr. Connors, who absolutely did not remember me. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. Oh. Yes. I officially joined Emily May, then chased down this hunter drone, and ended up in a base. Okay, I may have been distracted during this. Suddenly, after 10 years of being Spider-Man, Peter decided to invent a webline on the spot. As Spider-Man, I got out of the Hunter's place, watched Kraven kill Scorpion, then switched back to Miles. I tracked down Felicia, who for some reason was being hunted. Maybe Kraven has beef with art thieves? I got this artifact from her, opened a portal, Give me rent. sent her to Paris, and then went to Coney Island to see Mysterio and perform. <laughs> They love me. For some reason, the crowd started trying to murder me, so I had to fight back until I got out of the simulation. But as anyone who's played the full game actually knows, it's not Mysterio, it's actually Jake Gyllenhaal's fault. Back to Peter, I easily won this water gun game and then found out MJ and I weren't compatible. Craven's guys came to capture Tombstone, but for some reason Craven wasn't interested in Mysterio. So what is the barrier to entry for Craven to hunt you? Guy who makes insane illusions? Bad. Old man with spinal cancer? We move. I tried and failed to save Tombstone by clearing Craven's group with a bunch of dodging and air combat. The hunters with crossbows that jumped around made this part harder, but I ultimately just spammed dodge. Unfortunately, I was also tasked with saving some dumb people who didn't think to just leave the area. 
You need to leave! Guys, no offense, but you saw me fighting Craven's Hunters for so long and decided now was a good time to get in the roller coaster line. Enjoy hell. Just kidding, it won't let me drop this roller coaster. Harry revealed himself as Venom, I revealed myself as Spider-Man, and MJ revealed herself as useful in this game. Seriously, thank you Insomniac for giving her an actual weapon this time. Harry and I went to do some experiments at Emily May, Watch this. Uh, woo. and then we went to save Tombstone from the Steel Foundry. Why didn't Harry try bending the bars? Is he dumb? I was thrown into more combat, but I was able to pull these pipes apart without taking out all the enemies, and I freed my guy Tombstone, and we got out real quick. I switched back to Miles and went to help the cultural center with some security issues, beat up some baddies, and this was the one time the game did force me to use Mega Venom Blast. Got this drum back from the museum, and then switched back to Peter. Of course, now it's time for everyone's favorite part, back from the first game. More MJ missions. Yay. Though I will say, the devs managed to make these more fun in the sequel. Connors got injected with lizard DNA just before Harry and I showed up, and I took out more of Craven's guys and made it inside, where this dog that was just outside the area I could move to disable my gadgets. Nice. Peter got stabbed and took a stroll through the zoo for a bit while dying until Venom saved him. And I gotta say, the part where Peter got Venom and stopped pulling his punches was super satisfying, so I got why he gave up being a good person for this suit. This is something else. I dressed up for Craven's party, and honestly, getting death threats from customers over nothing is literally just a normal day for anyone who's worked in food. Also, shout out to this guy who said coming through that clearly just wanted to start drama since his cart had nothing on it. I met Craven's pet cat and got caught snooping. Uh, meow. And after being thrown into this fight, I unlocked Symbiote Surge. This is an extremely useful power up and one that will surely help me out in many instances throughout the game, which is why I immediately ban myself from using that or Miles Venom power up. Good riddance. Even without more Symbiote Surge, I demolished these hunters and threw this last guy through a window. I had to fight even more of Craven's guys in this graveyard, and this mini boss with the shield was an absolute pain to take out while other guys shot it. Symbiote Surge made this boss fight way too easy, so this was the point where I officially banned it. Time to get good at parrying. Luckily, we put our differences aside for a minute and got to have a nice chat. This fight was actually pretty hard because I sucked at parrying, so this was sort of my first big test in training to get better while suffering along the way. And before leaving, Craven showed up to find my weakness. Back at Emily May, I crawled into a particle accelerator, which caused some trouble. Harry won't be able to put out the rest of these fires himself. Exactly, so we gotta make some more. Craven's guys once again tracked us down. Almost like they're trained hunters or something. I was forced to get Symbiote Blast, but even with that, taking out some of these enemies was tough. This guy in the bear fur took forever to take out, too. As Miles, I went to chase down this drone, and then I visited his dad's grave. Rip Jefferson Davis, you would have loved the return of OG Fortnite. Meanwhile, Peter broke into Dr. Connor's house. Being an incredibly smart scientist, I knew it would be hard to track him down, and surely wherever his secret lab was hidden, must use a very sophisticated combination lock that can't be easily guessed. Pizza time. Hmm, that was way too easy. After a chase into the sewers, I went to fight the lizard, and this was tough. Now is probably a good time to explain how parrying works in the game, or more precisely, how it doesn't work. Basically, if you hit the parry button before being hit, you'll parry an attack and sometimes stun the enemy. If you see a yellow ring before an enemy attacks, this means you have to parry, because dodging means you will still get hit. A silver ring means you can't parry and must dodge. Call it a skill issue if you want, but I found this mechanic super inconsistent and frustrating because I would constantly parry right before an attack, only to be hit anyway, or to not stun the enemy. Also, if you dodge, you can't cancel it and parry, which made the undodgeable attacks super tough to deal with. I think playing without the massive crutch of gadgets, abilities, and constant healing made me rely on parrying significantly more and really exposed how inconsistent the mechanic was. The first two parts took about 45 minutes or so, which wasn't that bad in the grand scheme of things. I took Connors for a run around the city, and then we brought the fight to round 3. Oh god, this part tested me. I did so little damage and had to rely on parrying and dodging for this because even these little vents didn't stun the lizard for very long or do much damage. The secret here was to web up the lizard as much as possible and keep a distance, but still, I died many times while failing to parry. 
I kept morale high, and Peter threw in some quips to keep the combat lighthearted and fun. No wonder your family left you! It's always a mental block with these games, but after hours of failure, I took some time off from playing the game, touched some grass, hey. watched the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, came back, and I beat the fight on my first try. Everyone say thank you, Freddy Fazbear. In total, this third round alone took a little over two hours to beat. I finally did it, and knew it would only get worse from here. Still, can't feel worse than this flashback scene of Connors begging the soldiers to shoot his arm off so he can avoid the symbiote. Since this iteration of Spider-Man doesn't care at all about keeping his identity a secret, I traveled back to Aunt May's house to let everyone and their mother know I'm Spider-Man. Meanwhile, MJ absolutely demolished these hunters. I fought off these hunters near the Queensboro Tunnel, and it took a while with how aggressive they were, combined with this brute axe guy who is a complete damage sponge. I saved this guy from a falling crane, and he thanked me by sharing some drugs and inviting me over to his house. Meanwhile, Peter was being extremely moody and decided to insult his dying friend because he's mad I'm ignoring him. While swinging around and listening to this podcast, Danica decided to target me like, What did Spider-Man do? Oh come on, does anyone really care about the lizard? I mean, his family doesn't. Meanwhile, Miles was missing, so his mom asked me to look for him. Go help him. I missed the part where that's my problem. Naturally, Miles was in Craven's hideout and had to go through a complete maze to get out. The rooms in here were super close quarters, and this one room with hunters was brutal. I could barely avoid them, and this brute hunter took forever to kill, but could take me down in about two hits. I attest this to being a skill issue, but just taking out this room took nearly 50 minutes. I used as much stealth as I could to thin out the enemies, but eventually this brute and a couple more enemies burst in the room, and avoiding them became extremely difficult. It's important to note that there are many instances where the game throws in big groups of enemies, and gadgets and abilities are extremely important here, but no help for me. Eventually, I made it to the fight against Mr. Negative, and fortunately, the game gave me some good advice earlier on. Relax and be a good proton. Huh? Stay positive. The first phase took a while, but to me, this is one of the easier boss fights. Mr. Negative has two attacks that are kind of tricky. He does a vertical wave that can be dodged to the side, and a horizontal wave that must be jumped over. The tricky thing about these attacks is there's no silver circle, so you have to watch the animation to tell whether you can dodge it or you have to jump over. Also, random glitches like this happen. The first wave took me about 25 minutes, and the next two waves were sort of similar. At the start, I needed to charge up one of my abilities to break this barrier in front of Mr. Negative before I could start attacking him. Once I beat the second phase, I managed to go right into the third one and beat it on my first try. Together, these last two waves took about 50 minutes, and after going into Miles' mind, I called off Lee's execution and sent him to find the other Spider-Man. Back to Peter, keeping in tradition with the symbiote suit, I chose to be a massive dick to Dr. Connors. We need to remove the symbiote. I'm busy. No one listens. At this point in the game, it was on to Craven. I came to his hideout and was locked into symbiote surge. Since I didn't activate it and there was nothing else I could do, this was fine, and I brutalized this entire group of hunters. Now the Craven fight. Knock off fur, drawn in eye scar, and I know he smelled awful. This ended up being one of the most frustrating parts of the entire game for several reasons. This fight was tough because it's an easy two-shot kill for him, and a 100-shot kill for me. This relied heavily on parrying, and if I couldn't get that timing right, I was screwed. There are two parts to this fight, and part one was honestly not bad. It took a little over 30 minutes, but there was nothing too crazy here. Okay, now on to part two of this fight, and this single-handedly might be the hardest segment in the entire game. Let me break it down. First, Craven had an invisibility power for most of the fight and constantly disappeared. This wasn't too problematic for the most part, since I could hear him and he was often predictable enough with his first strike, though he would sometimes switch it up. I found this section awful when it came to parrying, and I got hit so many times when I swore I hit the parry button. The window to parry was so small, it was super unsatisfying having to rely on it. This fight also had a bell, which I had to immediately web up when Craven would strike it, or I couldn't move or attack. This also meant I had to camp next to the bell, because if I was too far away, it would mean instant death. Craven also had a few moves. An axe he struck the ground with, a spear that he threw at me or the bell to ring it, his fists, these bombs, and at two-thirds and one-third health, he had three dogs that he brought out which I had to kill while he attacked me. 
but by far the worst move he had was this sniper. He would either throw a flashbang or immediately after setting off bombs, basically teleport to be perched on a tree. Nothing personnel, kid. His sniper was near impossible to dodge too, even if I hit the button when my spidey senses were red, which is <laughs> literally a core mechanic of the game. His shots did insane amounts of damage, and if I didn't hit him fast enough or get lucky, I would die instantly. This really ruined the fight for me, and without this garbage move, I think I would have beaten this much quicker. Anyway, here's a sniping montage for fun. No more. Please. On top of Kraven's ridiculous moveset, my punches did very little damage, and this fight ended up being one of the most ridiculous ones in the game. The second section alone was one of the longest parts I've replayed for any of these challenge videos and took nearly 6 hours. Once again, skill issue, but to me, this pointed out how the dodging and parrying mechanics were really inconsistent, and how unfair the sniper was. After all that pain, all that suffering, I was rewarded with… another boss fight. Luckily, this was a cakewalk compared to Kraven. Okay, not really, I still spent an absurd amount of time on this, but Peter was way easier to take out. His moveset was much easier to counter, and for the most part, I just spammed parry. Peter didn't have too many unavoidable attacks for the first two parts, so spamming parry, using lightning abilities, and hitting the bell a few times allowed Miles to school Peter. Part 3 humbled me much more and took over an hour because Peter finally remembered he had symbiote powers and used ones that I couldn't parry. I don't even know what happened here, I think the game just hates me. After another long and hard battle, I finally beat it. Bro's really beefing with some black licorice, huh? Two long boss fights later, and I finally got rid of the symbiote. Anyway, Peter's boring now, let's switch back to Venom. Aw, look how cute he is. Stop! Non lethal! Non lethal? So that's it. What, we some kind of suicide squad? After getting demolished for so many hours, it felt super satisfying to play as Venom and just destroy these soldiers. Also, since this is the only part where you play as Venom, upgrades didn't really affect this part of the game, so it was essentially the same as a normal playthrough. A nice little keyboard smash for good measure, and then onto the Kraven fight, the rematch. But first, I heard there was a glitch where you could free roam as Venom, so before getting to that Kraven fight, I took Venom on a nice sightseeing trip around the city. Man, New Yorkers really just do not care. Okay, no more glitches, now onto the fight. Thank god this was absurdly easy compared to the last Kraven fight. I didn't really do much here, just a bunch of parries, and Kraven was down for the count. And at the end, Venom got a little snack. Was that the bite of 87? After going back to Peter, I searched for Harry and instead found a bunch of symbiotes who made sure to humble me real quick. I took them out, but the game made me fight so many at once, and they took a lot of punches to take out. This would be a pattern for the rest of the game, and the symbiote enemies were brutal. Remember, there's people in there though, be careful. Since Miles was a music tech major, I had a realization. If he played just the right sound, people could be freed from the symbiotes, so they could throw tomatoes at him while he played trash beats. I gathered some noises and went to work. Of course, Miles' mom and Genki got caught in the subway looking for Miles, so I had to go save them. I set up some sonic bombs and saved the people in the subway. Okay, someone tell me why this is the first police officer I've seen in the entire game. The NYPD budget is over 5 billion. If they were any more useless, they'd be the Avengers. I swung back to my house. Harry and I had a coffee date which MJ third wheeled, so Harry gave her a new look. I just know the people who live next to Peter gotta be pissed. Get HOA on the phone. The scream fight was a battle, and of course it had four rounds. Unlike the other boss fights where I had to rely on parrying and dodging, for this one, I had to rely on twerking. This fight took around two hours overall, and scream was tough. There wasn't really a secret here to beating this fight, but it had a lot of environmental objects. Specifically noises to stun scream, so I could take her out. It wasn't easy, but eventually I beat it. I saved MJ from this dope symbiote that actually looked pretty cool, and had to save some civilians from the fate of looking sick as hell in these symbiote skins. I mean, come on. I had to fight a bunch of symbiotes, including this giant one on the roof, before they got Peter, and Miles had to drag Lee into Peter's head, which was a pretty disturbing place. It makes sense why Spider-Man would think about this place. I 
cleared Peter's brain of the symbiote and cleared out this group by City Hall. Norman desperately tried pleading with Venom and even begged for his son's life, but still couldn't stop showing off that hair like, dude, we get it. I saved some more people from symbiotes, and speaking of hair, I met up with Miles and got a look at his new suit. It's time for a Miles Morales original, you know? It looks good. Then as Miles, I went to empty this nest, which I had to hold off for a few minutes. I got you for three minutes! Three minutes of heat time! It mostly involved spamming dodge and keeping symbiotes clear of the bomb until time ran out. Miles warned Peter to wait for him, so naturally, Peter went off on his own, and oh my god, this sewer symbiote section took me an hour to beat. For this section, the game basically spawned a ton of symbiotes all at once. This seemed like an obvious place where gadgets and abilities would do a lot of heavy lifting, but I had very few resources to work with, and on top of that, even though I had two fully charged abilities when I got to this part, the game glitched a certain point and reset my abilities, so I had to earn them entirely. For me, the main strategy here was to keep moving. No matter what, I needed to spam dodge, parry, and just jump around as much as possible because at any given time, there were about a dozen symbiotes chasing after me and aggressively launching themselves at me. I couldn't do much but spam my webs as soon as they refilled, and getting this done required a good amount of luck, but I finally cleared this section. Venom ambushed me, but I had a vision and teamed up with Miles and MJ for the final mission of the game. I went to my house, and very inconspicuously, there was a guy watching me walk into the front door. After some very careful planning, in which Miles somehow got his uglier suit back, and I couldn't change it, we went to fight Venom. Shout out to Insomniac for making the MJ missions more fun in this, because the final section in the sewers almost felt like something out of Resident Evil. Still, this behemoth symbiote fight was super frustrating. Cool concept, but man. I got out of there, and it was on to arguably the hardest fight in the game. Someone I loved and was extremely close to like a brother. Oh, and Harry. I protected you in high school, now I'm gonna kick your little ass. <sighs> Venom, I promise we're gonna free you. The Venom fight was a struggle from the beginning and did not let up. Venom was brutal, and his attacks could be unpredictable. He often swung at me multiple times, but changed up between attacks with a force parry or with no parrying, and if he got me, he undid most of my health. To add insult to injury, some of the animations were super drawn out, and he would literally carry me a couple hundred feet just to spike me into the ground. I had some alarms I could use to stun Venom, but most of this fight came down to patience and being lucky with parries. After a long battle, I finally made it through round one of Venom, and being an absolute freak, he tied me up. I got out though, and made it to the second round of this fight, which was absolutely brutal. For the second phase, Venom spawned in a bunch of green symbiotes that would jump at me. I had to dodge them and avoid Venom, but this was tough as they came at me from different directions, and even with sound cues, it was hard to tell if I could parry an attack or not. I died to them countless times, and many of my attempts for this didn't even make it past the first group of symbiotes. Even a single one could do up to 80 damage, and I only had 110 HP. While avoiding these symbiotes, I had to wait until my abilities charged up so I could break Venom's armor and actually damage him. Like Kraven and his dogs, the Venom fight also had a second segment with more symbiotes that were even more aggressive than the first group. I finally made it through that, and yeah. I managed to die with this much health left in one of the all-time biggest chokes I've had for any of these challenges. It was so demoralizing, I genuinely considered giving up and doing a different challenge before finishing this. It sounds silly, but this fight really took so much out of me. But I handled it like a champion. Luckily, I stuck with it, and just a few tries later, I finally took out Venom's second stage. I'm back! I'm back! I was so happy getting through this after spending so much time on it, but then the reality hit me, I still had two more phases of Venom, and with some quick math, that meant I had 38 inches of Venom remaining. What? No. But you can't do this to me. You know how much I sacrificed?! Miles took over, and Venom's third stage was super easy, only taking me a little over 15 minutes. But Venom's final round was tough. Not nearly as hard as his second round, but still felt brutal, and the inconsistent parrying left me incredibly frustrated. On top of that, the game crashed a few times, which was something I dealt with throughout my playthrough, but fortunately, it was never at all a really bad time. During the final stage of Venom, he launched waves at me between unparryable and undodgeable hits. At the very end, Venom regained his wings and launched dozens of rockets at me. Dying at that stage was also painful, but eventually, I pulled through, 
and after an extremely drawn out cutscene, we unalived Venom. This also unalived Harry for a minute, and while making sure he was dead, Miles accidentally shocked him back to life and kept him alive just long enough for Norman Osborn to drink the J. Jonah Jameson juice and blame everything on Spider-Man. Ah yes, Spider-Man standing near Harry with an ambulance, he clearly must have done something. And that concludes the story of Kraven and Venom. Until the inevitable DLC, of course. This challenge was brutal, and it was honestly way harder than I expected. I think this game is much harder than the first game, especially the boss fights. As proof, here's the endgame showing all the gadgets and skills that I didn't unlock, with a plethora of skill points still to be used. And as more proof, I'll upload a video of all the boss fights during this playthrough and link it in the description below. I really enjoyed this game, and even though people have complained it's too short, I still like the story overall. I 100% would recommend upgrading on your next playthrough, but if you are a masochist like myself, this is a great challenge. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and be sure to subscribe to Epic Geeks Gaming if you enjoy watching gaming challenges like this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.